Georgia Tech finally is going to come to Vault Hemingway Stadium after 80 years of trying to get them there. I'm going to tell you why they're going to go home sad. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. Also, the Rebels do play the Yellow Jackets Saturday night at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. We'll get to see all the adjustments that have been made by Lane Kiffin and company from the Tulane game until the Georgia Tech game. And we get to see Jackson Dart continue to be that dude. You can catch every play on the Rebels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM channel 81 or on the SXM app searching Ole Miss Rebels. Locked on Ole Miss podcast is there as well. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis and this is the Locked on Ole Miss podcast. And I hope everybody is having a good Friday. Before we get started, I do want to let everybody know that these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Now, Ole Miss is going to win this game, okay? They're going to win this game. They, they, They have a better team than Georgia Tech. It's a home game. They have a lot of things going in their favor. Now, what makes it scary and the, and what makes you think about the difference in the line and the spread is going on the road to play a two-lane game and that huge Alabama game that is just eight days away, and then you have a team that you beat 42 to nothing just a year ago on your schedule. Sure, people are going to say, oh, okay, don't worry about it. We're not going to do that. And I understand that there's – not that many players on Ole Miss's team that was on Ole Miss's team last year. Same goes for Georgia Tech, but you know who is on those teams? People that were on the staff last year. People that remember it. So for Georgia Tech, this is going to be a major revenge game. This is an SEC major measuring stick, similar to what North Carolina just did with South Carolina, similar to what um, Florida State had with LSU. This is an ACC versus SEC matchup and Georgia Tech is going to come over here very fired up about it. That sandwich that Ole Miss has um, with that Georgia Tech game in the middle, that, that makes it problematic. And not so much problematic for the win, but it's problematic with the spread. If you look at the recent betting lines, Ole Miss is currently favored by 18.5 points, over-unders at 63.5. This is the number that would concern me in this game, Okay. The drama in this game will be about whether or not Ole Miss covers the spread, not whether or not Ole Miss wins the game. And and this thing has gone down like a point and a half, two points since it opened. So they're seeing it in Vegas as well. Now, this is right about the line of where I think this game is going to end up. So by the time the game starts, Ole Miss might cover the line based on my score, but right now they probably would not. Um, but it should be an interesting situation in the game to begin with. Now, if you look at the keys to the victory that we put out on Tuesday, it was do not fall into that Alabama trap. At this point, there is no Alabama trap because the main thing that that was was about preparing for Georgia Tech. I, I think they're going to be up and everything's going to be fine from this point at moment on. If we did not fall into the trap on Tuesday and Wednesday, they're not going to fall into it now. And I want to see the Ole Miss um, Rebels use the quick passing game against Georgia Tech. I want to see a return to the hitches. I want to see Michael Trigg get involved. I want to see that happening. You know, Michael Trigg is sitting, he's got four catches, 65 yards, and a touchdown on the year. That's not the greatest thing. Now, he was, granted, he was suspended the first half of the Mercer game. So that would have been the stat padding game. But against Tulane, he did make a big play that kind of put, that game away. And when you look at Jackson Dart, Jackson Dart this season has been unreal good. And with if you think that Jackson Dart has not been good at all this season, 
and has not been the best player on the team this season, you have not been paying attention. He's currently 35 of 50, 601 yards. That's over 300 a game, six touchdowns and an interception. The interception was a slip from the wide receiver, not the quarterback's fault. Really good stat line from Jackson Dart. And it's just a situation where I want to see the next stage of his development. I need that quick, quick game to come into his arsenal. Because if you look at Jackson Dart, he currently leads the country and plays over 20 yards downfield. And with like 17 in two games. It is big, the big plays happen. The big plays are very consistent in this offense. What I need is to see an improvement in the sh- quick game, in the short passing game. And I think that's going to happen. It was a combination of not having Caden Priestcorn, and we still don't have Caden Priestcorn. We're hoping to get him back for Alabama. Michael Trigg was suspended for the Mercer game. He had a big catch against Tulane. Um, it was his only catch of the game. But if, if you can unlock him, he's a matchup problem in the quick game for Ole Miss to utilize. And Jordan Watkins, who's quietly been a pretty good football player this football season, um, I, I, I think that he is settling in at that slot position and is making plays, and he's going to get better and better and better. And and he has to because, you know, Alabama fans, I talked to Alabama fans, they said the season starts this week because they need USF to get right for Ole Miss. They have the same concerns that people have about Ole Miss playing Alabama. They have those same concerns about Ole Miss right now. They're kind of panicking. Um, So this is a situation where Ole Miss can kind of get right. And we're going to talk in the second segment of the show. Um, another reason I think they're going to win, they're going to get Quinshawn going. And I'm going to tell you how they're going to get Quinshawn going in the second segment of the show. But the quick passing game, the hitches, the plays that were large parts of Ole Miss's offense prior to two years ago, to prior to 2022 when Matt Corral was running the show, the bones of this offense. It's there. The quick game is a part of what Ole Miss does. Hitches, bubbles, things like that. And I realize that Ole Miss fans are not huge fans of the bubble screen because of what happened, you know, 10 years ago. But they will be important to make the linebackers running side to side. You need a tight end that can make them worry about behind them. You need to make them worry about running side to side. And then you have the threat of Quinshawn. That's going to make Quinshawn better. And the offense, those simple fixes of not allowing the safeties and linebackers to bum rush up to attack the running game will allow Ole Miss to kind of look like they they did in 2020 and 2021. Because I'm going to tell you guys right now, Jackson Dart's having a Matt Corral type season through two games. He is. He's completely in control. This dude is on it, and it is just amazing to see. But Ole Miss wins this game because of Jackson Dart displaying the evolution in his game and just being allowed to make plays. I think think Jackson Dart is going to be the best player on the field come Saturday night from either team. And because of that, um, Ole Miss will win the game. When we come back, I'll tell you how Ole Miss is going to unlock Quinshawn Judkins in the run game and how that will help the offense as well. But right now, I do want to let you know, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. It helps you find the right team for your faster, for your team faster and for free. Now, we all know how to create a profile. In this world of social media, we're like 20 years in now. We've all created profiles. We know how to do that. Well, LinkedIn's added a little special thing, and you can add a purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're, in fact, hiring. It's got simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience. So you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. You know, when you add the right team member, it's kind of like hiring the right football coach. If you make the right hire, he can take you to unbelievably 
productive years in your football program. If you have the wrong guy, you're going to be hiring another guy very quickly. It's a huge impact on your business. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering leading quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. It's time to get locked on pickles. Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickles, that is. They are offering a variety of Cajun spice products like pickles, green beans, okra, even carrots and asparagus. This is a family-owned company, homemade on the coast of Mississippi. Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickles has been pleasing pickle lovers for over 20 years now and has become the South's favorite pickle. These are truly the best pickles you'll ever have. It's got a strong dill flavor with a Cajun punch, and it does have a punch. No over sour taste. You know, this being a small business, they strive to keep the produce fresh and local from the start, keeping the final pickle product extra crisp and crunchy. You can find these pickle products online at thepickledstore.com. The link is in the description or at your local Rouse's Market or other southern stores near you along the Gulf Coast. Be sure to sign up and like these Cajun, Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickle product on Facebook and Instagram. Try these pickles, okra, and beans today. You will not be disappointed. Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickles, the South's favorite pickle. Very good stuff. The link is in the description. Um, they do a good job, and they also sponsor our Why Ole Miss Wins episode. We're doing Why Ole Miss Wins. Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickles sponsors the Why Ole Miss Wins episode every week as well. So, also, I want to let you know that college football season is here, and the this season, the Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 to 1 Eastern on every Locked On College YouTube channel. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and they go in depth on things like Locked On, the only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of college hosts covering every team every day. Find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday from 11 to 1 Eastern on any Locked On College YouTube channel, including this one. You will not want to miss it. All right. I do think Quinshawn Judkins is going to break out this week, and and we've been waiting on Quinshawn to break out, and and people are basically playing an engage eight running back. Or they're running the ball against eight-man fronts and stuff like that to stop Quinshawn. Quinshawn, we told you for six months, is going to be the focus of the offense. Every defense is going to come in and say, hey, we can't let number four beat us. Every one of them. And that is exactly what's happening. And Georgia Tech is going to try and do the same thing. Now, here's one situation that concerns me about Georgia Tech, okay? Georgia Tech, let's see, what's the word? They gave up five yards of carry against South Carolina State and nearly 200 yards rushing. Now, granted, there was like a 50-yard run in there that would bring the average up a little bit, but that's still too many yards to give up rushing to an FCS team. So Georgia Tech, I'm quite certain they were looking ahead, just like, honestly, Ole Miss probably will a little bit Saturday night. But... That tells me that Quinshawn should have success running the ball, and Ole Miss absolutely obliterated Georgia Tech last year running the ball. Just just smoked them. Now, I think Georgia Tech's going to be able to score points this year. I think Haynes King is a better quarterback than Jeff Sims was. I think Haynes King is a former player of the year or whatever in Texas. He was a highly recruited player by Texas A&M. He won that job twice throughout practice through what he did and what he can accomplish, but ended up losing the job for various reasons. Now he has a chance to, I don't know, get a do-over in a different situation against an SEC team, and I think Haynes King is going to be up. I think Buster Faulkner is a good offensive coordinator. I think Georgia Tech is going to score points in this game. This isn't an indictment on Pete Golding. I think Georgia Tech – 
can just be good offensively. If you look at the second quarter against Louisville in the week one game, Georgia Tech scored 28 points, moved up and down the field with ease to the point where you're like, hey, Georgia Tech's going to be a problem for people. Georgia Tech has wins on the road against ranked opponents in their last eight games, or um, twice in their last eight games, I should say. Um, they beat North Carolina, and I think they beat somebody else. They are a better team than they were last year. Okay, that that I think that's the point that I want to put out. You don't expect forty-two to nothing whenever you line up, but defensively uh, on the run defensive line i have said all week that georgia tech has better players than the tulane greenway the one area that georgia tech does not have better players than the tulane greenway is on the defensive front they are a little bit undersized you can run directly at them and physicality you should be able to win against this this group and We'll see exactly what Ole Miss does. But I want to see Quinshawn Judkins, I want to see them call plays to utilize him in different areas of the field. It can't all be inside run. I realize that we do tempo, and tempo is a thing. But everybody else knows that we're calling that play too. So I would like to see some outside zone thrown in. I'd like to see some screens called. I, I would like to see different spots that Quinshawn Judkins gets the ball and the creativity that this offense absolutely has, I want to see it. And if that happens, I think Ole Miss has a chance to do pretty well against the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets on the ground. I'm expecting north of 200 yards rushing as a team. I'm not willing to go. I think Cole Kublick said Ole Miss is going to run, Quinshawn's going to run for over 200. Could happen. I don't expect it to. I think Ole Miss is going to use him a little bit in a pistol set. I think that is going to debut as the offense gets a little bit more complex, some stuff that they want to put on film that they ha- that Alabama has to prepare for, stuff like that. But I think Quinshawn, it, he kind of announces his arrival in week one. And quick passing game, if Ole Miss does that, and we talked about that in the first segment, if the hitches, if the tight end pop passes, if the quick seams, if that becomes a thing, all of a sudden the linebackers cannot bum rush up and all of a sudden Quinshawn, his footwork can kind of take over and you can see the stuff develop that is Quinshawn Judkins. It, it should be a lot of fun to see as well. Now, when we come back, we'll have a score prediction for the game and we will just kind of look at – the uh, the extra stuff, anything that we might have missed, just thinking out loud a little bit as well. Anyway, stick around for that. But I do want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. You can get ready for the NFL season with these incredible offers from FanDuel. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. $5 bet, $200 back in bonus bet. That is crazy. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. I watched that this weekend. I have Sunday ticket. YouTube's doing a good job. I like the quad box. That is a game changer on YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. The Rebels play the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Central. We'll get to see the adjustments made after the two-lane game, the the tools and toys that Lane Kiffin might have in his arsenal for Jackson Dart, who's been absolutely a dude this season. You can catch every play of the Rebels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on Channel 81 or on the SXM app. Searching Ole Miss Rebels, the Locked On Ole Miss podcast is there as well. Uh, now, this is a game I've talked about a lot of stuff. And when you look at the what to watch for that we did early in the week, this is a game that Michael Trigg announces his arrival. I think I think this is a perfect game for Michael Trigg. And let me tell you why. Michael Trigg 
um, going up against a team that is rushing up. He has the ability to hurt Georgia Tech. Now, it has to be fairly quick. It can't be something where you're running deep seams with Michael Trick. That's not what I want to see. I want to see the equivalent of the pop pass. I want to see the equivalent of the stuff that made Harrison Bryant a Mackey Award winner. I think that happens. That is in this arsenal. Charlie Weiss was the offensive coordinator of Florida Atlantic with Harrison Bryant, who won the Mackey. It's there. The offense is going to be constructed a different way, but it's gotten to the point where you don't need to be passes outside the numbers and runs inside the hashes. That's a recipe for failure once you get into teams with equal talent. Also, Ole Miss needs to make Haynes King uncomfortable. This is the first time, believe it or not, Ole Miss has played Haynes King because both years they played Zach Calzada one year in Oxford, and then they played um, Connor Wiegman last year in College Station. Haynes King won the starting job at the beginning of the season, ended up losing that to both of them. Now Ole Miss plays another team that Haynes King is a part of, and that is the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Should be interesting indeed. I like Haynes King. I think he is probably two to three times the quarterback to what Jeff Sims was um, last year. And as you watched Nebraska in the last couple of weeks, it's like, hey, who watches that Iowa offense and says, hey, we want that. That's what we want our offense to look like. And, and Nebraska is in, in a weird, weird spot at the moment. Um, Jeff Sims is going to take the brunt of that. Now, Again, we'll look at lines real quick. Ole Miss is favored. This is I, I'm recording this on Thursday. Ole Miss is for currently favored by 18 and a half points. Um, the over under is at 63 and a half. And I'm sitting here wondering what Ole Miss can do. I think Ole Miss wins the game. The only question becomes what whether or not they cover. I think that is where the Alabama trap is actually going to man itself, manifest itself. And whenever I look at scores of this game, I'm going with Ole Miss 42, Georgia Tech 24. That's an 18-point spread. So that's a win but not covered. Now, that could change in the next um, day as the line moves closer to kickoff. But as it sits right now, it would not be a cover. I think Georgia Tech is going to score. I think Buster Faulkner is a very good offensive coordinator. I think Haynes King is a really good quarterback. Chase Lane being out for this game for Georgia Tech is a is a loss. It's a real loss. And Georgia Tech is going to try and run the ball and do the things that they do. Uh, you will see Ole Miss evolve their offense. I don't know if it's a situation to where they will look completely different or anything like that, but I do think the pistol is going to be incorporated. I do think the tight end is going to be used. Michael Trigg, this I think this might be his game where he announces his arrival. Now, we look on the outside, and there want, there's questions about Trey Harris and Zachary Franklin. And honestly, in this game, this isn't me being braggadocious or anything. Ole Miss could win this game with Aiden Williams and Dayton Wade and um, Braylon Brown, those guys playing wide receiver. Uh, they could win. And honestly, they could step up. This is a big game for Braylon Brown. I'll put it to you like that. If Braylon Brown steps up and makes plays against Georgia Tech, he's in a position to be the dude moving forward. Now, I'm not saying he's going to beat out Zachary Franklin or Trey Harris or anything like that. I'm saying that he becomes that person in the rotation, like him or Aiden Williams, who's getting the um, number three wide receiver snaps. That is what I make. It'd be really interesting to see. There's playmakers on the outside. Ole Miss has signed four-star after four-star after four-star at wide receiver. The, there's players with ability out there. They got the scholarship for a reason. Um, so now they just need to show. This is a game, like I said, that Ole Miss should win. They have, I think they have a better football team than Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech's better than they were last year, but Ole Miss has a better football team in e than even what Georgia Tech is this year. Should be interesting. SEC Network, all of that stuff. Hey, if you don't want to listen to the SEC Network bro um, broadcast, you can catch it on SiriusXM Channel 81 or the SXM app. Search Ole Miss Rebels. That's there for you. I, I can't imagine 
the, the, I guess this is Cole Kublik's first time back to Oxford since that horrible broadcast for Arkansas. I, I think that has a chance to go off the rails a little bit. But, I mean, that's the biggest question of the night. It's not whether or not Ole Miss loses the game. The question is going to be that and whether or not Ole Miss covers. And that's pretty good. And then we'll get ready for Alabama. And then we'll get ready for LSU. And then we'll get ready for Arkansas. should be a lot of fun, indeed. But I'm pretty fired up about this. On Friday, on today, um, I'm taking the wife to, to the airport. I'll be kind of out of pocket all day. But we've got videos programmed and everything. And you've got College Football Kickoff Live coming up in about four hours um, with Kenton Gibbs and Drake Toll and um, Alex Dono, who do a fantastic job with that program. Honestly, it might be one of the best preview shows that are that is just out right now. So I recommend everybody check that out. I think the first week it got about 200 views on my channel. The second week it got nearly 500 views. If we double it again, let's let's get that up to a thousand. Um, I will I will not be on the broadcast this week. Um, I will be next week. I almost guarantee I will be next week. You don't want to make promises about things like that, but I don't honestly don't know if there's any way that I'm not on there next week. I mean, I might even be on there live. So tune in, tune in for that. Get an idea of what's going on. Get an idea of the other host in the Locked On Podcast College Network. Um, and just realize this, not just me and Zach um, going back and forth all the time. So I hope everyone has a good time. Be careful going up to Oxford. As you're listening to this, I hope you're driving safe and keep it under the speed limit and do whatever you need to do. But enjoy the Grove, enjoy the Oxford, enjoy all the things that make that special. Should be a lot of fun indeed. But thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day. Hey, Stewart's Cajun Dill Pickles. The link is in the description. They are the sponsor of all of our picks. You might have saw that a couple of times during the week as well. They sponsored today's Why Ole Miss Wins episode. They do a fantastic job, and they've been a really good friend of the friend of the podcast, and, and we like helping out local businesses small businesses and we 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 promote and we market that's that's what we do so um get yourself a stewart's dill pickles cajun dill pickles um jar and heck your saturday will be better for it i i, I genuinely like it as well so i hope everybody has a good weekend we will see you saturday evening with the pregame show immediately after with the postgame show um, Brian Smith will be Saturday morning. Tom Vanderford will be tonight. We still have a ton of videos, but we're Ole Miss every day, and we're proud of that. So, anyway, take care. Hotty toddy.